Hey everyone, this video is going to be extending off the previous video as this video will be going into constructing the actual site. Currently, we have the first video, first video which builds the Twitch bot and sets up basic communication between the bot and the website. Then, in the last video, I want to review and what makes an application and how to use it. To begin, let's build a framework for lists and build upon that to add sockets. Like I pointed out before, I am expecting you to already know HTML and CSS, so we'll just go ahead and put GitHub in the description and you can just copy those. However, the HTML will have new view properties entwined in it, so I'll explain what those are and how to use them. The first thing we want to do is go to main.js and install several um, new modules. These modules are going to be uh, view socket, and that's what's going to allow us to connect with the socket from the Twitch bot. View X, which is going to allow us to install application, um, to sorry, not install application, but install other plugins that we're going to need. And then we're also going to need persisted state, which will allow us to maintain the state of the application through refreshes. Um, so it's really easy just like we have import router we're gonna import view socket IO from view X no not view my bad view dash socket dot IO then we're gonna be importing view X from view x and lastly we're going to need create persisted state from my bad from view x persisted state and that's all we need to do to install these um, from these it is never used alright so now what we want to do is we want to tell view that we're going to be using these and it's quite literally just view.use and then we pass it so we're going to do this for view x um, view.use view socket io and we need to add a co configuration from this so we're just going to be doing http console slash slash forward slash forward slash local that is terrible local host column 3030 because that's what this is going to be running on um, as it's set up right here <coughs> and then we just set, make sure that's right and we have one last thing we need to do here I guess two technically is we need to go ahead and set up UX so we're going to be setting up something called a store and this is going to be something a part of UX which is going to allow us to access data um, through persisted state. Um, and it's really easy to um, set up, so we just do constant store because we don't want it changing, you know. We only want the internal state to be changing. We don't want the actual store to be changing. Um, equals new view x dot store. And it's basically we're gonna pass in an object to it. Uh, and it's just going to be kind of like this set up where you have something colon information um, and the first thing we want to do is we want to pass in plugins and this is going to be an array and we're just going to pass in create persisted state oh didn't even finish that and this time we are going to add the parentheses because it's just uh, the way it's supposed to be um, and like I said, this is plugins, and this is things we're going to pass that build upon UX that we can access later. Um, next, we want to go ahead and add something called state. And uh, one thing to note if you're bothered by the two spaces, you're not alone. Um, I think the way you fix that is you go into no modules, node modules, you go all the way to ESLint. I believe. Let me find it. Yes, Lint. Uh, 
I don't know. It's, it's like you just gotta find um, whatever is the configuration files for for this, and you have to change it in here, which is superbly annoying. It's some kind of linter. It might, um, but you can go through these and try and figure out which one it is. I did it once before. Um, if I figure it out again, I'll go ahead and take a look, and I'll put it in the description and tell you which one of these is and the configuration that you have to change um, and you can just go through and change all your settings to the way you like and yeah but for now we're just gonna go along with it um, so like I was saying before we have the state uh, and we have what we have to do is we have to add states and so basically what the state is is this is the information we want to store and this is the things that we're going to manipulate whenever we um, store information and this is going to stay persistent through reload and so we're going to do um, three things here we're going to do name and it's just going to be an array and you set it up in this fashion if it was a uh, an object or something you know you do it the same way opgg it's another array and we're going to do bits gg um, Actually, never mind. Maybe, maybe if I do like, this is like the last part of the series. But maybe if I go ahead and back to and like extra stuff to show you uh, more stuff, it'd be useful. But we'll just leave that out for now. Um, so after this, uh, we can't actually directly manipulate the state, or we're not supposed to. So we have to do something called mutations. And what mutations are is they are functions that we define that allow us to access the state. So we want two states. Actually, sorry, scratch that. We want one state. I'm trying to boil this down a little bit, so it's really simple. So we want update. And the way you do that is we want, here we go. So what's going on here is we're telling this store that we want to create this state here with this information here. And this is what we're going to access when we um, need to. But whenever we want to make a change for it, we create um, a mutation and just for the record this doesn't have to be called update it can be you know blah 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 for all we care I'm just naming it update because it's going to update um, these states and you can pass it either one or two things you can either just pass it state and so that so it can access it can mutate this and then you can have the extra extra parameter p and what this is is this is just an object with information that you you pass to it, um, which we'll see in uh, list. Well, we'll have to rename this to list so it's more coherent. But once we get to that, I'll show you. Um, in in mutations here, this update we want to do state dot opgg equals p dot opgg, and then we want to do state dot name equals p dot name if I'm correct. Um, or I think what I meant to do is <coughs> excuse me um, yeah what we want to go ahead and do here is we want to add the information but what we're doing by this is we're passing the reason it's this way and we're not adding to it is because if I remember correctly, sorry it's <laughs> been a been a week since I last worked on it. This it's sending an array every time it updates. And so where were we? Right here. This is not actually going to be an OPGG, this is going to be an OP.GG array. So we're setting this array equal to this array. Um which is why it's this way. Um and that's the crux of JavaScript, I'm going to say, is because it's not strictly typed, so things can get confusing like this. So you got to make sure you always um, take care of that. But, why is there an error? Missing space before function parentheses. Oh, yeah, it's very, very picky. Extra semicolon. The, the linter is extraordinarily picky. Trailing space is not allowed. Yeah, it's it's a pain. I, I, I have it all turned off in my other environment, but I forgot forgot how to do it here um, yeah so I'm sorry um, 
it's a pain. I, I know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's the last thing we need to do here. Actually, my bad. There's one more thing we have to do. We have to, what, what is this error now? It's not declared. We have to tell the view application that we want to use the store. So, to pass it into the view application, we just just add it like we like uh, routers added, and you just put a semicolon or not a semicolon, a comma, and store. And now this can be um, accessed from within here. And that's all we have left to do in main.js. Um, the next thing we want to go ahead and do is is we want to go ahead and come into index.js, and we're just going to rename this from list uh, from hello world to list and this is just so um, it's easier to tell what it does so we're just gonna do list there uh, and we can just change this to list which then will require just to change this to list and then just change this to list so now we're in here last thing we want to change is we're just gonna change this to list um, and like I said before, um, I'm expecting you to already know CSS, CSS, HTML, and the basics of JS. Um, so for the CSS and the parts of the HTML, I'm gonna just give you the code to copy paste. Um, the CSS here is one of those occasions. I'm just going to go ahead and. Paste that there. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of this. Um, although you want to make sure div, I think Emmett's built into this, div dot hello. Yep, there we go. We want to make sure we have that div to make sure it stays in close because that's something that is required by Vue. Is that in template, the first thing, everything must be enclosed in a div. Uh, and that's okay. So the first thing we want to go ahead and do is we want to go ahead and make a button. Not disabled, just a regular button. Uh, and we want this. Actually, you know what? Sorry, I keep forgetting. I'm cutting this out. It's a clear button. Because it's just the bare bones. That's all we need. But I am. We are going to need an unordered list, and we'll name this example two. I don't know. Because I think that's what I have it as the CSS. Mm, nope. It's not mentioned. So I don't even think we need this. So we can just delete that. Um. We have the unordered list. And then we're going to use some little tricky notation here. And this is the HTML portion I was talking about of view. What it allows us to do is there are several different things we can do. Like I showed you before, we can bind one way um, attributes. Or we can do, I forget what it's called, but we can bind like text boxes to do two way data binding. What we can also do is we can iterate through things. And the way we do that is we use a, oh, no, nope. sorry, something open here. And the way we do that is we use something called v-4. And you can do that in line. So what we do here is we create a link here. And we're going to use another attribute here, v-4. And we're going to set this equal. And we're going to put parentheses in this. And we're going to do item in index. And basically, what this is, oh, in list of names. Okay. And so, basically, what this is saying is there's an index associated, you know, one, two, three, four. That's automatically counted. But there's the item. And this is the actual, like, each piece individually. So, if you know how a regular vo uh, for loop works, um, or an enhanced for loop, I should say. If you've done Java, you can see that or if we just kind of right here do a little example four. Say we have an array. Um, let's say int array. Okay, and that's equal to random. Say these are all 
or da 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 da. Say they're just a bunch of random numbers in this. All right, we can do something called int num array, and basically what this does is if we can access num here, and this would be a for loop with each individual element iterating through it. This is equivalent to say we had var array. Or if you're familiar, we have um, for each, but this is equivalent to doing this. And what this here is saying is uh, we have an array with three items in it, right? So for each element in the array, well, that is array. Length. For each element in the array, we want to go ahead and grab the item at that index. And that is what this is doing. This is grabbing each item at each index and displaying it. And you'll notice exactly how it works in a second when we get to see it visually. Uh, what is the error here? In iteration expect to have a v-bind key. Um, Alright, ignore that for a second. We're just going to do a quick little shorthand key and we're going to bind this to item. And inside of this li, this uh, and so, uh, one thing I forgot to note is in each of these, we can like if for in this li, for instance, if it's an open and closed, we can when we're inside of it, we can access that. And I'll show you here. So we're gonna add an anchor here, not an anchor, uh, an a, and this is a link. And we're gonna set the hyper reference to. Well, we're not going to use the standard hyper reference. We're going to use the view hyper reference. And you can do view dash, uh, I think it's what, bind reference. And, and this will work just fine. However, we're going to use a shorthand notation. If you do colon ref, it's going to be the same thing. Um, or we're going to do view dash bind href here in a second. Um, this is just necessary as a reference to index. Um, and we're also going to be doing something called target. We're going to do underscore blank. And all this does is this is when you click on the link, it creates it into a new tab. Uh, this is just necessary. Um, so don't worry too much about it. It just registers a reference, as it says, to an element or child component. Um, and this is for something I was working on. So actually, we could just delete it. But I'm showing it to you so you can go ahead and build upon it. Uh, last thing we need to do here is a tad bit complicated uh, attribute wise, or it's going to be a lot, is we want to do the v dash bind like I was telling you. And um, we need to do colon href. And this is telling us we want to bind the href attribute. And this is uh, what we want the href to be binded to, is what we're going to put in here. And so this is going to be list of. OPGG, and we're going to do it at index because it's an array, and uh, this will grab it at this index. All right, and the last thing we want to do is we want to grab that index and add one to it. And like before, you can use these double curly braces to grab the information um, that that is storing. So since this index is just going to be numerical value that's being counted by this v dash four we can access it with this double curly brace and just add one to it because remember it's going to be zero indexed so it'll start at zero and then we want to also display the item and that is that and the reason I did this dash is just uh, to separate them you know you can put whatever you want in here because it's literally just what's going to be displayed um, and yeah, that's all to it to the HTML portion. I know that it's a bit complicated and it's probably be a bit murky being explained. However, uh, you can go ahead and look at their documentation, which is very easy to follow, and it'll show you exactly what it is. Although I will say sometimes it doesn't explain everything properly, but it'll, it should give you, you know, just with some experimentation. That's just what you got to do to get familiar with it. You can't learn everything from this one video or any video. You just gotta start using it and learn how it works. This is just to show you 
you know a basic like some things that you can do with it um, but that being said we're gonna go ahead and get into the JavaScript portion to finish it up um, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna get rid of data here because we're not going to be using data as you'll see here in a second um, but we do want to go ahead and set up sockets and what this is is this is going to be from the store before right or not from the store before but this is going to be from the view.use that we started in main.js when we imported it and as we could tell from on our twitch.js we have two things here io.onConnection we're going to admit new opgg and that's really the only thing that we need to do throughout is just send out this new opgg um, something that's pretty standard that I like to do is I like to add a connect just to help debugging and you'll see the syntax here the log socket connected cannot type today um, yes semicolons forget you can again disable that somewhere in there <laughs> um, so basically what's going on right here is this is a sockets object and uh, it's just like everything else um, and in here we put a function and this is what's called when it receives this so if you're not too familiar with sockets the way it works is you send a title basically and then the information so the information is this that we're sending the title is this name so as we can see here so this is saying when we get a connection we want to say socket connected um, and I'll best it'll be better demonstrated with new OPG. So if we so the thing that we get the most is we get the new underscore OPGG title. So we have to name this new underscore OPGG because this is an event. This is what the function this is going to be technically an anonymous function. And this is basically going to be the function every time it gets a new OPGG title sent to it. And we're going to just console.log the data and this is going to help debugging purposes so we can see what's going on and this is the first time that we're really going to need to see the store uh, and how it works so every time you try and call the store you can't just directly call it you have to do something called a commit and this allows for you to keep track of it so you can revert and do debugging and all that stuff but this is just how view works so you do this dot and this is going to be a bit weird store with this dollar sign and this is so you know that you're accessing view here and accessing the store and we're gonna dot commit now when we're committing something you have to set it up as an you're passing it an object to the commit and we're gonna give it three pieces of information type update and this is going to be the function that we're calling if you remember in main.js here this is the function that we're calling the type and then we're gonna pass it our other pieces of information so we have the OPGG and the data that new underscore OPGG and we're gonna pass it the name because remember that's what we were looking for in here name data dot oops, data dot user and that's all we have to do with sockets next what we have to do is we have to figure out a way to get the information and the reason we're not using data is because well data is good for simple you know structure however when something's a bit more complex or has to access um, the store we're gonna use something called computed and this is um, similar to how we've set up everything else it's just computed mid, computed colon uh, object notation and this is how we're going to access the information. So we're going to do list of names, just like this, uh, except with curly braces, my bad. And return, and we're going to have to access the store again. This dot store, and we want to access the um, the list of names here. So how do we do that? Well, we can access the state, and we can access the name um, array of the state and expected oh list of names 
return why is it doing this hmm that's being a pain uh, we can check that out in just a second and then we're gonna do the same thing for list of OPGG and we're just we're gonna turn this dot store except dot state then we're gonna access OPG um oh, so cool. that's right uh, why is this semicolon expected uh, it's being weird oh that's because that's not return that's return my bad <coughs> and so that's really all we have to do for this so let's go ahead and just make sure it works uh, let's go ahead and do terminal and we don't want a power show we want Change the default terminal show by selecting the customizing button. Okay. Whoops. Daisies. Oh, selector preferred. I didn't know you could do that. Let's see here. Uh, change shell or shell. Select default. All right. There we go. Anyways, we have command now. Let's just get rid of these two power shells. I'm not a power shell user. What is that noise? Jesus, my brother's playing me. The Wii or something in the background, and he has it on full volume, so I apologize for the noise. But, anyways, um, yeah, run, run, whatever. npm run dev. Nope, that is not right. npm run dev. Ah, uh, this is really npm run. Let me just make sure I'm doing this right. Again, it's, where is it? Package. Dot it should script npm. Can I just do npm start? What? No such file directory. You bought package.json. This is. What? Oh, you know what I probably have to do? cd viewbot npm run dev. There, that's what it was. It's because this was it. Yeah. So that's, you know what that's going to do? Oh, and at the same time, npm uh, twitch the JS. So let's see, once this is running, it's just going to build everything. Um, you should see it up and running. We got to go ahead and install them. So yeah, so it'll give you a nice little install thing here. So we'll just go ahead and terminate that yes and go ahead and install them it goes yep Found seven vulnerabilities. All right, audit. Might might as well fix them. I've never seen this before. Uh, that's a bit odd. I'm gonna not gonna lie. But let's just go down. Let me run dev. Fix zero of seven vulnerabilities. So I'd suggest going to change it. Um, uh, errors. Strings must use single quotes. Yep, just like I was saying, it's very strict on. So this is gonna be list dot view. Um, so yeah, it's just single quotes instead of double quotes. Data is not defined in list dot view. Oh, that's because I forgot to add the data parameter, and that's just something you want to add um, because you can access the data that's sent over. By the 
thing. And there we go. So that should be everything fixed now. Yes. Yes, that's it. Um, as we can, so then we can just go C localhost 8080. So it's like, woo, something's running, and we can see, <laughs> hello, root. But let's go ahead and give it some things. So twitch.js, it's mine. So let's go, you know, go ahead and see it works. And I'm gonna, if it doesn't work, I'm gonna show you how to debug uh, and the process it takes. So, console, error connection refused. So what this is going on means is that, so what happened here was I went over, I, in my thing, I just posted my OPGG, and what happened was, well, nothing. So that means that something's not working right. So we can go ahead and see that connection is refused, which could mean a couple of things. The first of which can mean that the Twitch bot isn't running, um, which, as we can see, cannot find no Twitch bot. So we're just going to npm install no dash Twitch bot. Sure I said, you know, stuff happens. Uh, error while okay, no git binary found in path. We just Twitch bot. Failed using git. Please check if you have git installed and in your path. What about yarn? You have yarn. Uh, that is a bit odd. How do you have git bash? So we're just gonna go to ct cdd cdd cd users forward documents programming teaching view bot npm install no dash twitch not save <laughs> see if that works that's, that's it's now deprecated well that sucks all right there we go that's installed now Let's see if it works that's a bit odd Cannot find module socket IO, so do npm install socket.io. I forgot to install everything, that's weird. I thought I did it globally. Guess not. Um, but might as well show it to you now. No Twitch.js. It should tell us when. Alright, so it appears that it should be up and running. So, we go ahead into here and now we see yep there we go socket connected and we received information so this is good that means it's working so this means that if it started not being able to connect again that means something in the twitch.js code crashed and we can go and check that here and as we can see cannot find module socket.io oh no it just crashed for no reason Oh, that's because we have all this. So I'm going to go ahead and just, for debugging's sake, we'll add that back in once we're ready to finish everything. But until we can figure out what the issue is, I want to see the crash codes. So now that's up and running. There we go. As we can see, event isn't defined. And that's just a event. Event. Just a simple spelling mistake. So let's see here, and avoid using primitive values key, use string slash number value instead. Ooh. Um, but as we can see, the information was sent. Yep. So we got the information. Let's just make sure it gets it again. It gets, yes, it does. And as we can see here at the top, it just doesn't like duplicate keys. Um, and if we hover over it, we can see that the information is indeed being passed and put in list form. Uh, it's just because <laughs> it's white. <laughs> it's white at the beginning. But everything is uh, working somewhat as intended. My, I guess my regex is a bit off, but if you want to fiddle with that, uh, you can. Uh, if you guys are interested, 
um, I'm planning on, well, next week I'm going to be starting a machine learning series, but I, what I might do is I'll do machine learning, and then the week after that, I'll be doing a revamped Discord bot tutorial. So come in and make sure you check those out. And uh, thanks for watching, and have a great uh, day, everyone.